Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 4.6, the quadratic formula and the discriminant. First, we're going to start off with the quadratic formula, and all it is used to is it is a formula to find solutions of the quadratic equation, this being the quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, and that formula now is this right here, right? This is the main part of the lesson, right? This is the quadratic formula. It is opposite b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and that's all over 2a. These b's, a's, and c's all come from this guy right here, the quadratic equation. a cannot be 0 because then it would not be a quadratic equation, and then b squared minus 4ac have to be uh, greater than or equal to 0 to have a solution, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. So first things first, when we attempt these problems, the first thing we have to know is what is a, b, and c. To touch on this again, remember a is attached to your x squared, b is in front of your x, and then your lone number is your c. Here my a is 2, my b is negative 3, my c is 6. On number 2, now my a is a negative 3, my b is a 4, I do not have a C, so how do we represent not having anything in math with a zero? So now let's get to actually some solutions of the quadratic formula. Here's the quadratic formula right here if you need it, right there. Now we're asked to find what are the solutions of 3x squared plus 5x minus 8. First thing that I would want you to do is to find your a, b, and c. So my a is 3, my b is and my c is negative 8. Now we are going to plug all three of those numbers in for my b, a, and c here. So let's go ahead and try it. So now I have opposite b, which is a negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. b squared is going to be a 5 squared minus 4 times my a, which is 3, and my c, which is negative 8. Closing it up as I extend the square root a little bit farther. All of this now, ladies and gentlemen, all of this is underneath the square root, and that goes over. That is over 2 times 3. Now I'm going to try to clean some things up here as I move down. So I'm going to go negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, then I have 25, and then when I multiply this all out, that's a negative 4 times 3 times a negative 8 to give me a plus 96, and that's over 6. Cleaning up one more time to get a negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 121 all over 6. Awesome. Now, can we go even farther? What is the square root of 121? Well, the square root of 121 is 11. So I put that down, and that is all over 6. Perfect. But now we have a plus minus, right? So we have two different kinds of solutions. We have a negative 5 plus 11 over 6. We also have another solution, which would be negative 5 minus now 11 over 6. So now we have to go ahead and figure out these two solutions. So starting with the one in the red, I will have a 6 over 6, which simplifies to 1. So that is one of our solutions. And then for the blue guy, I have negative 5 now minus 11, so it's going to be negative 16 over 6. We can simplify that to negative 8 over 3. So now our two solutions are 1 and negative 8 thirds. My next question, though, is how many, or what is the amount of roots that we have? How many answers do we have? How many solutions do we have? Well, count them. We have 1, 2. So we have two roots or two solutions. Let's try another one. With 4, what do we have to do? First things first, I want to get everything to the x squared side. So this guy now turns into x squared minus 8x plus, because I added it over, plus 16 equals 0. Next thing, 
What's my A, B, and C? My A is 1, my B is negative 8, my C is 16. Great. Now the quadratic formula is right over here where we can start plugging A, B, and C into. We have opposite B, which is a positive 8, plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16. Again, all of this is underneath your square root. And that goes over 2 times 1. Let's clean it up some more as I work down. We have 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared turns into 64. Then we have 4 times 1 times 16, which turns into a minus 64. Again, that goes over 2. Simplifying some more, this turns into 8 plus or minus the square root of 0, of 0, all over 2. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so it's just going to be 8 over 2. 8 divided by 2 turns into 4. So 4 is one of our solutions. Do we have another solution? No, we do not have another solution because we took the square root of 0. So how many roots do we have here? We only have one right there. Moving forward, last one here. First things first, does it equal 0? Yes, it does. Now we have to find our a, b, and c. Here our a is 1, our b is a negative 2, and our c is 5. So now let's use our a, b, and c, put them into the quadratic formula. So starting with opposite b, remember opposite b is opposite of that negative 2, so opposite of negative 2 is a positive 2, plus minus the square root of a negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5. All of that is underneath the square root, remember, all over 2 times 1. Now I'm working down here, so it's going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of a positive 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4, minus, and then 4 times 1 times 5 is minus 20. All that goes over 2. Now I'm working to the right here, so it's going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of a negative 16 all over 2. Now when we start simplifying this even more, we still have a 2 plus minus all over 2. But now, with that square root of a 16, first things first, what does that negative turn into? Well, that negative inside of a square root turns into an i. The square root of 16 then turns into 4. So now it's 2 plus or minus 4i divided by 2. Well, can we take out anything? This 2 goes in there how many times? Just once. And this 2 goes in that 4 twice, so it's going to be 1 plus or minus 2i all over 1. Or if you want to, rather, have 1 plus minus 2i for your final answer. That would be perfect. So how many solutions do we have here? How many roots do we have? Well, we have plus or minus, so we have two roots. And now the very last slide. We are asked to find the value of discriminant of the equation. Well, first, we need to know what is the discriminant. The discriminant is the part that is underneath the square root. It is b squared minus 4ac. So let's go ahead and find the discriminant. Same thing again. Does it equal 0? Yes. Our a is 1, our b is negative 8, and our c is 16. So we are going to plug these numbers into just the discriminant, just into that right there. So we have b squared, we have a negative 8, that is being squared, minus 4 times 1 times 16. Simplify, we go 64 minus 64, 64 minus 64 is 0. So our discriminant is 0. But what does our discriminant tell us? What does 0 mean? 
Well, our discriminant tells us that if we have a positive value, we will have two real roots. If we have zero, we will only have one real root. And our negative value, if we have a negative value for our discriminant, we'll have two complex roots. Remember, two complex roots means that we will have an i in our answer. Complex means we will have an i. So, what does the zero tell us? The zero tells us that we will have one real root for this quadratic equation. So this right here gives us one real root. And that does it for section 4.6, the quadratic formula, and the discriminant. Good day.